Hold up. Hey everybody, it's Costa. Just coming for another video about me and all my business uh, adventures and all the things that are going on in my world. A um, few things took place today. It was a pretty low-key day. I spent most of the day working at uh, Starbucks, which is always nice. Uh, there's a new Starbucks in Westminster that uh, they moved about 20 feet from the old one, but they wanted to drive through, so they uh, took over a building uh, off of Route 140. It's uh, it's pretty nice, and uh, I love doing work from Starbucks, even though I have my own office space. Um, but it's nice to get out and kind of mingle with people, especially the people of your community, especially when you live in a small community. Um, some interesting things happened today. Uh, that's the case pretty much every day. That's one of the perks of self-employment. It's one of the perks of business ownership is literally something new will happen every single day. Um, right off the bat, if you watched my video yesterday, I had to fire someone yesterday. Uh, I was able to hire someone immediately. Um, that person didn't show up today. Uh, it was a, it was a uh, tough... Uh, tough go today in Harrisburg. Um, my manager, Walt, managed to find someone uh, to bring in and and help him out for the day, but um, we need to get someone in there full time pretty soon uh, or else I'll be up there working. That's typically what happens when we're in between, um, when we're in between finding people. Um, some of the other stuff that happened today is my private label quotes came back. Uh, I want to have my. I want to start a line of filters, my own filters, my own branded filters. Um, if you don't know what private label is, private label is essentially when you take a existing manufactured product and have the manufacturer produce labels for that product. Um, when you private label something, it can be anything from sunglasses to sandals to. Um, you see it a lot with um, smaller. Uh, trinkets there's a lot of private label uh, supplements um, if you uh, are aware of any of the YouTube and uh, Instagram gurus out there they a lot of them got their start with supplement companies uh, that they private labeled there's nothing proprietary about it there's nothing special about it not that there's a problem with it but it's just uh, you're basically going off someone's work and you're you're branding it I mean Private label is fantastic if you're an expert brander. If you're good at branding, if you're good at marketing, then you know you could private label pretty much anything and, and be successful. Um, the third thing I dealt with today was a tough one. Uh, our building in Harrisburg is heated from wood pellets, and it's kind of an annoying situation because uh, most quick lubes are heated by... Most quick lubes are heated with a waste oil heater. A waste oil heater basically takes the uh, oil that we take from the cars, uh, from our customers, and burns it cleanly um, and produces heat. Uh, it's nice. Um, it's nice when uh, heating when it's expensive to heat when energy costs are high, natural gas, oil prices, um, propane prices, but um, the people that I bought quick change from kind of wanted to double dip a little bit and they made kind of a short-sighted business decision and they removed the waste oil heater and put in a wood pellet stove um, what people might not know is that when uh, the price of oil hits a certain point there will be businesses that will actually pay you for your waste oil and I produce about 500 gallons of waste oil a, a week and so with that waste oil that I produce um, it has to go somewhere and it has to be disposed of um, environmentally friendly. It has to be disposed of properly. And so there are companies that will either turn it into um, tar. There are companies that will uh, re-refine it and turn it back into motor oil. And there are some companies that will use it for their own um, purposes, uh, multi-use purpose, motor oil, waste oils. Um, got a lot of good uses. But so... When you're getting a check every week for anywhere from five hundred to two thousand dollars every single week just to have the oil taken away, you know you might make a rash short-term decision like removing your waste oil heater because you might have 
uh, the misconceived notion that you're basically burning money. Um, well, that might have been the case because they got rid of the waste oil heater. They put in a pellet stove burner and uh, of course about the time when I first took over quick change the price of oil had crashed so bad that they had actually stopped paying for it they were taking it away for free for a while um, when they took it away for free that was nice but uh, then the price of oil went down even further and then they started charging me so on top of um, not getting a check anymore uh, now it costs money to have the oil re uh, removed and it's like 30 cents a gallon. Um, so it's pretty expensive to have that waste oil taken away now. And then on top of that, um, I've got to buy pallets of pellets. And uh, if you are ever at Home Depot or Lowe's these days, you'll see the so-called sales on wood pellets. Um, they're very expensive. They're almost $6 a bag. Um, I found a nice company in Pennsylvania that deals with Amish. The Amish uh, make the pellets for super cheap and uh, the pallets are not that bad. But I gotta buy three, four pallets every single winter now because uh, I'm dealing with a wood stove, I mean a pellet stove and not a um, waste oil burner. Now Marilube, Chicago, uh, and I think the Pittsburgh store has waste oil heaters so I won't have to worry about that at all. But with the Harrisburg store I gotta buy pellets and um for that i thank the amish um the only other thing that really went on today because i spent a lot of time at uh starbucks kind of cleaning up my ebay pages um i finalized the pittsburgh store finally um so as some of you may know i bought a store in pittsburgh uh that makes the um that brings the count to uh, four brick and mortar stores and then the distribution business. Um, it, that's in the past two years. Um, again, another store that I'm not in it for any money. It's a little bit different than the other two stores. I have a, um, I have a, a silent partner in this, so uh, I'll be running it as if I am the 100% owner, but I do have a silent partner who um, put up the money for this store. Um, it's snowing right now. We're supposed to get a little bit of snow. So I was going to go tomorrow for our first actual day. Um, but at this point, I think because I um, think we might actually get a decent amount. Uh, I don't think it's worthwhile for me to drive out to Pittsburgh. It's about a two and a half hour drive for me. Um, and if I'm going to be there, I don't want, I just don't want to get stuck in Friday traffic. I might just wait. I think I'm going to wait until Monday to do it. Um, I am meeting with a professor at Mount St. Mary's. Sometime next week, Dr. Ionoff, I'm going to be hopefully speaking to the mount, doing a keynote, uh, talking about entrepreneurship. Um, that'll be that'll be exciting because I think the book will be finished by then. Um, I got the final edits on the book. The that just needs to go back to the publisher, and then the copies will be distributed. So. Um, that's really it for today. Tomorrow's going to be a similar day. I'll probably. Either just stay home all day or go to the office. Um, can't imagine that there's going to be too much going on, but obviously that can change in a heartbeat. When you, uh, whenever you own your own business, things happen suddenly and they happen quickly, and you have to be able to react to them. Uh, you got to be prepared for it. One thing I am dreading is if the snow that we're getting here in Maryland gets pretty bad in um, Dillsburg and Harrisburg. Uh, I got to be on top of that because there are certain liabilities as a business owner. Uh, the whole slip and fall thing. There are people that uh, will, uh, you know, hyperbolize their falls <laughs> uh, and try and make a little bit of money off you. But um, you know, those are kind of those are kind of the things that you have to deal with. That's what insurance is for. That wouldn't be my problem anyway. Um, Tomorrow, I do want to start a new thing called Filter Friday. Uh, I want to start uh, talking about filters, the oil filters. There's really nothing on the internet that um, really goes into in-depth reviews of the different oil filter companies. Uh, there's a couple guys on there, a couple mechanics that do a good job. Eric, the car guy. Um, can't remember the other guy's name, but uh, that won't be so much about small business or entrepreneurship or anything like that. That'll be more so just um, just a review type 
uh, review type thing where I'll talk about the products that are uh, relative to my business. Um, the filters are kind of an interesting thing though because it, it did help me scale what I thought was an unscalable business. Um, obviously, if if you if you're following me on Facebook, you know that I'm a Gary Vaynerchuk disciple. I will consume his content uh, content uh, constantly. It's always running in the background when I'm doing my work. Um, you know, I really thought my business wasn't scalable, um, and then he just you know, puts you in a position that you weren't, he puts you in a position to think about things in a way that you didn't think about it previously. So, um, you know, it was probably late 2015 and I started thinking to myself, like, what are the things I buy a lot of? Cause when you obviously you buy in volume, that's when you get your price breaks. And the first thing that jumped out with me other than oil was the oil filters. And I was like, well, let's see if I can sell some oil filters online. And that's, you know, that's how the distribution business began. And that's how that, um, once that distribution business took off, you know, that business itself did 120,000 in revenue, um, on its own. And that was with no overhead. That's just me. Uh, I have my employees that are at the quick loops basically do a lot of the work for that. And so that took away a lot of the overhead. The only overhead the distribution business has is it pays for the, uh, office space that I have on main street. Um, but besides that, there's there's no overhead. So um, I'm working on th paper thin margins, but um, it has a, you know there's a dual effect because the more filters I sell through the distribution business, the more margin I get at my other businesses. So even if I was even if I was breaking even, like just selling the filters online at cost, it would still probably be worthwhile because that money I'm getting on the back end from uh, the uh, on the uh, quick loop side. So that's just something to think about if you if you're an owner operator, take a look around your store, think about the things that you buy a lot of. Um, you know, one other thing to think about is because um, that topic reminded me is putting everything on a credit card. Pretty much everything in my business is put on a rewards credit card because there's fixed expenses. There's just there's discretionary expenses. The fixed expenses, if you can put all of it on a credit card, if you're going to be buying it in cash anyway, why would you turn away the points? Right now, uh, I have a Spark card, 2% cash back. Um, by 20, 20, uh, 2018, I should be doing a million dollars worth of uh, oil purchasing a year. And 2%, you know, that... That would be my salary right there. Um, so, <laughs> that, I mean, I could I could stop taking money. I could just pay myself the cash the cash bonus as my my living income, um, or just treat it as a nice bonus at the end of the year. But that's uh, that's just something to think about if you if you're an owner operator. But um, some of the other things that are going on is. Uh, we got end of the month stuff. I know I talked about it in the last video, but uh, I got a lot of invoicing to do. It's invoicing is probably the worst part of uh, business ownership. I hate invoices. I wish I could hire an assistant to do invoices, but it's just something you got to do. Um, I've got a lot of fleet vehicles on net 30 accounts. Basically, that means is I give them 30 days to pay, whereas everyone else pays on the spot with a credit card or cash. Um, the fleet accounts are businesses that have a lot of vehicles and um, I give them 30 days to batch their transactions and basically pay with uh, a check or um, electronically online through uh, QuickBooks. But I'll be dealing with that's probably that's probably what I'll spend a good chunk of tomorrow doing is getting my invoices taken care of. But I say that every day and uh, I still haven't done them and it's now the fifth. So and those are supposed to go out on the first of the month. Um, I consider myself a pretty hardworking person, but invoices are definitely my crutch. I I struggle heavily with getting invoices done. Um, you know, my office is right down the street from McDaniel College. I really need to get an intern. That would probably be the smartest move I could make. Um, that's really it. I'll go, uh, go ahead and end, end this episode with that. Um, I decided to title it ATG, All Things Greasy. Uh, I think it's, I think it's hilarious <laughs> because 
I'm Greek and I deal with a lot of uh, greasy stuff and I like to travel so um, I just got a text message from my oil rep as this video is being recorded because it's being recorded from my cell phone um, that he's going to be able to uh, take care of my Pittsburgh store so that is actually really big news it's breaking news in my world because that means that uh, I'm gonna get four store volume on oil um, which means I'm gonna be able to have a little bit of leverage to renegotiate that price so um, that's that's fantastic news uh, I think that's a good note to end the the video on so um, if you want to subscribe got some people subscribing got people on my Instagram at Costa Capo Twitter at Costa Capo I'm readily available I always have my cell phone on me so um, been talking to a lot of people about the book a lot of people are interested in in uh, the zero down business because a lot of people want to a lot of people see what I did and they want to know how I did it and there's nothing special about it and I want to help as many people as possible do it um so hit me up if you have any questions about it feel free reach out i would love to talk to you about it it's my passion i love talking about business um it's funny my wife earlier today basically said do you ever get sick of watching shark tank and i thought to myself i was like no because that's like watching that's like you know it, it's business is it's the thing i love so it's like having a TV show dedicated just to that, you know, the things like The Profit, Shark Tank, Billion Dollar Buyer, now this new Blue Collar Millionaire, that stuff, you know, that stuff really, really gets me going, so, um, so that's that, um, I'll talk to you guys later, uh, if you want to email me, cost at capogroup.com, K-A-P-O group.com. <laughs>